Hey everybody, my name is Daniel Fusco and welcome to Bite Size Bible where we take a section of scripture and we break it open to see, okay, what does it mean and then how does it apply to our life? And I'm really excited to get into what we have today. So we're going to be looking at Luke chapter 24, verses 1 to 12, and then also we're going to be looking at verses 36 to uh, about 49 today, because in a, it it's a resurrection message. It's an Easter time, and we wanted to be able to look at Luke's account of the life of Jesus. So let me read to you first Luke 24, verses 1 to 12, where it says, Now on the first day of the week, very early in the morning... They and certain other women with them came to the tomb, bringing the spices which they had prepared. But they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. Then they went in and did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. And it happened as they were greatly perplexed about this, that behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. Then as they were afraid and they bowed their faces to the earth, they said to them, why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but he is risen. Remember how he spoke to you when he was still in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again, and they remembered his words. Then, verse 9, they went from the tomb and told all these things to the eleven and to all the rest. It was Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary, the mother of James, and the other women with them who told these things to the apostles, and their words seemed to them like idle tales. And they did not believe them. But Peter arose and ran to the tomb, and stooping down, he saw the linen clothes lying by themselves, and he departed, marveling to himself at what had happened. Now, here in this account of the resurrection of Jesus, we find the women, they're going to the tomb of Jesus because they, they weren't able to properly prepare his body for burial. Remember on Good Friday, it was getting late. And so, you know, they just kind of put Jesus in the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea. Nobody was able to really prepare his body. So after the Sabbath, this is early on resurrection Sunday morning, uh, they come, but they find the stone rolled away and Jesus is not there. And they're blown away. And, and I want to start by looking at verses 9, 10, and 11 because you have these women, they go and they tell Jesus' his own disciples and apostles that Jesus wasn't there. And it actually says here that when they said it, their words seemed to them like idle tales and they did not believe them. Now, and here's the deal. For many of us, the resurrection sounds like nonsense, right? J just like the apostles, even though they were Jesus' own followers, when, when these women came and shared the story that Jesus had been risen from the grave, it sounded like nonsense. So I think it is very fascinating that the resurrection story begins with doubt and, and, and feeling like this is crazy on the, on the part of the apostles themselves. And it's very common for people to doubt the resurrection of Jesus. And I'm here to tell you that because of Jesus' resurrection, it puts Jesus in a different category of everybody else. Jesus isn't just a great teacher, although he's the great teacher. He's not just a great healer or a great prophet, although he is those things. The fact that Jesus rose from the dead, that changes everything. But I realize that for many people, it sounds just like idle tales. Now, there's going to be a question that's going to be coming on up. Let's spend some time reflecting on that question and, and really working through it, praying through it, and I'll be right back with you. Go ahead. Reflect on your own journey with doubt. Are there any works of God that feel like nonsense to you right now? Are there any ways you're doubting who God is or what he's doing in the world? Now, as we continue in this passage here in Luke chapter 24, verses 1 to 12, we've already seen that, that the resurrection may sound like nonsense, but I think you also want to realize from these verses, Luke 24, 1 to 12, that the resurrection was also fact-checked. And we see that because obviously the women go to the tomb. There's a number of women there. And they saw what went on. They heard the testimony of these two angels who said, why do you seek the living amongst the dead? He's not here, but he has risen. Remember how he told you these things? And then those angels are quoting things that Jesus said. But then also notice what it says in verse 12. It says, but Peter arose and he ran to the tomb and stooping down, he saw the linen clothes lying by themselves 
and he departed marveling to himself at what had happened. So Peter just didn't think, oh, those women are crazy. This is nonsense. He actually went to the tomb and Peter found the tomb empty. The Apostle Paul also tells us in the end of 1 Corinthians that uh, the women saw Jesus resurrected and then uh, 500 people saw Jesus resurrected, many of them who were still alive at the time that Paul was writing that letter. He said, James saw it, all the apostles saw Jesus, and I finally saw Jesus alive. And so we live in a fact-check culture, which I think is a good thing. But guess what? You have to realize that the resurrection was fact-checked. And the reason I believe with all of my heart in the resurrection of Jesus is I'm not just taking blind faith. I'm not just taking a blind leap into the dark. I believe in a fact-checked reality because all they had to do was show the body of Jesus and there'd be no such thing as Christianity. Nobody would believe in Jesus because Jesus isn't alive. But because he is alive right now, we can follow him because the disciples, they saw him resurrected from the grave. Now, listen, I have that another question that's coming and I want you to spend some time with this. The fact that the resurrection is fact-checked. We want to be able to think about this, think through this, and I'll be right back with you. What are the steps of faith God is asking you to take right now? What are the facts or truths you can rely on that make your faith not blind, but informed? So now as we jump on down to Luke 24, verses 36 to 43, I'm skipping over the section of the disciples on the road to Emmaus. And I want you to spend some time reading that story on your own in the middle there of Luke 24, because it picks up when the disciples get back and they start talking to the other folks about what had happened. It says this, Now as they said these things, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and said to them, Peace to you. But they were terrified and frightened and supposed that they had seen a spirit. And he said to them, why are you troubled? And why do no doubts arise in your hearts? Behold my hands and my feet. That is, I myself handle me and see, for a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. But while they still did not believe for joy and marveled, he said to them, have you any food here? And so they gave him a piece of broiled fish and some honeycomb, and he took it and he ate it in their presence. My friends, listen, we need to let Jesus give us peace. We know that Jesus shared that peace with us because as they're hearing this story about Jesus being resurrected from two disciples who had seen it, all of a sudden Jesus shows up in their midst and Jesus says, peace to you. Right away, Jesus says, listen, I come bearing peace. And it actually says that when Jesus came bearing peace, that they were terrified and they were frightened. They thought they saw a ghost. And Jesus is like, man, listen, don't be troubled. Don't let doubts fill your heart. Look at my hands and my feet. Look at the scars from my crucifixion still there in his resurrected body. And he's like, listen, no ghost has a body like this. And they were still kind of blown away. And then Jesus is like, listen, you don't really believe me? You got some food? Right? Jesus says, give me some food to eat. And he, and he takes some, some fish and some honeycomb and he ate in their midst. See, Jesus is offering each one of us peace. First, peace with God that comes by believing in Jesus, right? Because we're, we're enemies of God without our faith in Jesus. But when we put our faith and trust in Jesus, he puts us at peace with God. And then because we have peace with God, then Jesus shares with us the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, which will guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. And we need to let Jesus give us the peace that he is desiring to offer us. And I want to encourage you, don't be afraid to bring your doubts to Jesus. Jesus does it with his disciples. He's like, listen, you guys have doubts, you have questions, look at, look at my scars, right? You just still don't believe? Let me eat some food in your presence. Jesus is not scared of your, your questions. Now, we're going to take one of those questions to be able to personally reflect on and ponder through. So take some time. i got a little more to share with you, so I'll be right back. Are you allowing Jesus to give you peace? Where do you need his peace right now? And what would it look like for you to embrace the peace Jesus offers you freely? So as we close out this message, we're now going to look at Luke 24, verses 44 to 49. It says, Then he said to them, 
These are the words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms concerning me. And he opened their understanding that they might comprehend the scriptures. Verse 46, then he said to them, thus it is written, and thus it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name to all nations, beginning in Jerusalem. And you are witnesses of these things. Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. And my friends, really what we learn here is we need to let Jesus share his new life with each one of us. Because really what Jesus is doing now with his disciples, he's reminding them that what had gone on with his death and resurrection is to fulfill all the things in the scriptures, the law of Moses, the prophets, the Psalms. And I love verse 45, where he opened up their understanding that they might comprehend the scriptures. Oh, I wish that the Bible contained Jesus' own sermon on the Old Testament, proving that the Christ needed to die and suffer and be resurrected. That would have been such a powerful thing. And it's something that as we study the scriptures together, we're always looking at how does this point us to Jesus. And then he reminds them that when we've been given new life by believing in the death and resurrection of Jesus, then it's our job to be able to declare that repentance and remission of sins should be shared with all nations beginning in Jerusalem. And he says, and listen, in order to do that, you need to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. All this speaks of the new life that Jesus has for the people who believe in him. And for each one of us, it is so important that we are walking in that newness of life. Like what the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, where it says, if anyone is in Christ, they're a new creation. Old things have passed away. All things are being made new. And God wants us to walk in that brand new life that Jesus' blood bought for us in fulfillment of the scriptures. And God empowers us by his spirit to walk in that new life. Now, there's one more question. I want you to take some time and don't rush over this. This is a great opportunity for you to let God's word sink deep into your heart and into street level where you're living every day. Go ahead. I'll be right back. What areas within your heart or in your life does God want to renew? What hopes or dreams feel dead right now? How does Jesus' resurrection bring new life to those things? Man, such a great time looking at the resurrection account of Luke 24. I do want to encourage you, spend some time reading the whole chapter, really letting it sink in, and I can't wait to see you all soon. God bless.